right, this is Perfect Plate XL from Denise.io, obviously a plate reverb. And plate reverb is distinctly different from room reverb. Uh, they have perfect room if you're interested in that. So uh, a plate reverb is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, they would actually, have, back in the day, they would actually have these giant metal plates and they would reverberate. And that's you know, where we get the name uh, plate reverb from. It's known for its sort of metallic characteristics. It's complex characteristics. It can be very bright. It can also be very dark. We have all of those controls here in Perfect Plate XL, from natural to dark to bright, how fast the plate is going to uh, reverberate. All your standard controls, plus a lot more controls in here, uh, resonance, drive, rotate, detune, and even a ducker is built in to this reverb. So you can really go from a standard, you know, plate reverb sounds to some really crazy, uh, uh, very interesting sounds with this single plugin. Plus, there's an EQ graph in here, so you can really shape and control every aspect of your reverb. The interface also freely resizable. All right, so let's go ahead and hop in here and check out how it works and hear a ton, a bunch uh, more samples. All right, so first we'll go over the interface just real quick here, just so you can get an idea of how this works. Uh, we have this snare track right here. Obviously it's bypassed. So first we have a damping control and the higher the damping, then the more uh, top end will be damped down. So it's not gonna be you know as, uh, as bright if you damp that down. Let's turn this on. You can damp it down a bit, as you can tell. Put this on about 24 or so. Then we can adjust the speed of that reverberation from slow XL to fast XL. Of course, we're gonna get uh, different sounds from that. If I have a shorter tail here in fast XL, or a longer tail, try putting a delay in there. Obviously, that's going to sound much different than going to, say, slow XL. That delay off. Then we have the character of those reverberations of that plate. We can make that dark. Or natural. Or, of course, bright. We can also flip or essentially reverse it right with uh, the interface here. Right, you hear it come back. You can try that with vocals. You can try that with all kinds of stuff to sort of have a, a reversed reverb and ambience effect. You have your split and your width. So we already have the split on right here. Let me go ahead and make sure my track is stereo. And we can uh, make this much wider with our split on and our width control here. Make sure I adjust this a bit. Turn that pre-delay down. We'll widen that up. Sounds much better like that, uh, of course. See, we have an EQ graph in here, so we can really adjust things however we want. Cut that out, maybe. Focus on the top end. And I can use my mouse wheel. I can just scroll and change my Q value. I can double click. It's gonna set those down to their uh, default locations. You can just click and drag these nodes around or come up here and click and drag for our Q, the gain, so the cut or the boost and uh, the uh, frequency there. Of course, double click, enter, you know, whatever you want. So input and output, that's self-explanatory. You can always compensate for your input or your output right here. The overall mix, of course, self-explanatory. We have a delay here, which is a pre-delay. So with the delay all the way down, of course, that reverb comes on immediately. But if I add in some pre-delay, you can hear that it comes on uh, after that. So if you have some percussion that you really want that transient to hit first, and then you want it, want it to sort of bloom on, you can use your uh, pre-delay for that, of course. Your tail, how long is that tail gonna go on? Or just really short. It's really short like that. If you change that to maybe a fast, less delay on that. Get all kinds of sounds here. Uh, width, we already covered that one. Then a high pass filter and a low pass filter. So cut out low end uh, or top end. 
So if it's really you know boomy or something, you can cut out some of the low, the, uh, low end or pull out some of that top end if there's too much sparkle or if it's too harsh. Already discussed, we can change the size of the interface. This will come with a lot of different presets. Just click your folder, you'll find them right in here. Of course, save your own presets. Use your uh, arrows there to just head through them. And then we get down to this resonance, the drive, the rotate, detune, and the ducker. And you can do some really cool stuff uh, with these things here. So for all of these, you can dial in the amount just by clicking and dragging. You can turn each of these on or off by just clicking this button that will turn that section on or off. You can click on the section and then you'll get to the uh, different controls for each of these uh, different things here. So real quick uh, to go over the resonance. First, I'll play it back here. Just so we know what we have, that'll work for us. Then we can choose our frequency and the resonance of that and then the gain. We have three different uh, bands here. So we're choosing by note values. Let's go ahead and pull this resonance way up. pull in more of the resonance so we can really hear it. So that you can really hear that there, right? So we can do the same thing here, pull in the resonance here. And of course, adjust the overall levels of that, but you can get some really cool sounds. Uh, out of your resonance and dial in just the amount that you uh, want there. You have drive, which is like, you know, different kinds of distortion. You can have it pre or post. Just gives a little bit of a uh, character to the overall uh, sound. You can buzz it, sort of a tape or a warp. Click on this to get back to the main page, pull our mix down and the tail down and delay up a little bit. change that to bright. You can hear that distortion in there for the drive. Just dial in the amount you want. Then we have rotate. So we can do vibrato, tremolo, the shape, so the sine wave, saw wave, and change your time here as well. So make it really quick. You really hear that shaking. You can smooth it out here. You have a detune, let me just turn that off and turn that off. Detune here, so sort of some tape wow and some shake in the speed. If you listen to that tail, you can really hear that. Detune can add a really cool sort of a character, maybe even a hauntingness uh, to your reverb. Let's check out the ducker. We'll come down to uh, this vocal to hear that right here so just the vocal I thought that you were worth saving. all right and the reverb on ducker down I thought that you were worth saving. I had my head above the clouds when we met so it's way too much reverb of course we could head in there and pull the mix down I thought that you were worth saving. You know, but I kind of want that amount of mix in there, but I don't want it so present when she's actually uh, singing uh, right here. So in between these phrases, we can actually have the reverb come up by using our ducker here. So we'll just choose the ducker, we'll pull in the amount, have our threshold controls here. It's basically like a compressor. Dial this down, grab it, grab more. If it's up here, it's basically not gonna do anything. All right, the attack time, hold, the ratio. Again, sort of like a compressor controls. So we'll pull this in now. I thought that you were worth saving. I had my head above the clouds when we met. So you can hear it come up when she uh, stops singing there. So just dial in the amount that you want. I'll pull down a little more here. Maybe attack it a little bit sooner. Head above the clouds when we met. So it comes up right there, right? I knew one day you would hate me. You can get really extreme with that if you want. I knew one day you would hate me. Then it really comes up. But a ducker is nice to have because, uh, you know, it helps you, uh, helps especially for vocals or really anything. It helps it to be a little more intelligible until there's some spaces when uh, that, that reverb can bloom up and uh, bloom on. And you don't have to do a bunch of automation 
with a mix control or something like that. All right, so that's basically all of the controls here. Pretty easy to use once you know what uh, know what everything does. You know, for this vocal, I might like a dark better, and maybe just go to a slow. Let's let's hear that. I knew one day you would hate me. Now my heart is cold and filled with regret. It's not bad. Maybe natural. I knew one day you would hate me. Now my heart is cold and filled with regret. Just too much on that. Uh, Hop in too much sparkle. I can dial that out. I knew one day you would hate me. Now my heart is cold and filled with regret. Of course, we could flip that around as well. I knew one day you would hate me. Now my heart is cold and filled with regret. So you can use that for more of uh, an effect there as well. Let's move on to some more samples now and hear this uh, more in action. So here we have a piano. And we're really using all of the controls here on perfect play. We have some rezo in there, some drive, rotate, detune, a little bit of a ducker, and we're using the uh, EQ here as well. So we've created an ambience. It's more than just a reverb. We've really created an ambience uh, for this track here. You can really hear that that rezo uh, resonance here really popping through. Pretty cool, better than just a standard reverb sound for that track. Anyway. Here. So an EDM style loop here. Now we have perfect plate on it. Some detune, a lot of detune in there. Some rotate, uh, some rezo with this uh, as well. <laughs> So we've completely changed the character of that. We added some drive in there, made it sound a little more analog with that tape. We've detuned it and made it rotate. So now it has sort of a shakiness to it. Sounds pretty cool. Again, that rezo, which uh, pops through every now and then with that resonance way up here. Again, without it. Back on. Sounds much cooler with that on there. And down here we have some cinematic hits. So just those hits. And the other one. Now we're gonna use Perfect Plate XL here to really give this uh, some 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 bigness, some giganticness, uh, some more power. Uh, if you have a sub, it, uh, you might want to turn it down, okay? So here we go. And that tail sort of rotates and it's detuned. Uh, and as you can see, we've really pulled in a lot here in this upper mid and the, uh, the top end. Controlled the bottom a bit, we could control it even more here with our high pass. It's got a pretty good tail on it. We have a bit of a pre-delay on there, so we get the initial hit, the initial attack, and then it just basically blows up, right? Uh, but in this case, I like this high pass filter down because I really want to hit that low end hard, but I gotta control it a little bit up here, otherwise it really gets out of control. which creates an ambience sort of underneath uh, those cinematic impacts. Then down here, now we have an electric guitar here. Let's bypass that. Pop on Perfect Plate XL.
Sounds pretty cool with that reverb in there. Ducker allows us to hear the guitar without, you know, too much going on. Detune gives us a bit of a chorusy effect on the tail, rotating it a bit, a little bit of drive for some character and analog goodness uh, there on the uh, drive and a little bit of EQ here, natural with a medium. We can do that on a, try on a fast and a dark. Let's try that. So it's pretty good overall. Of course, completely different character than making that slower and bright, let's say. Medium and natural. And one more sample here. So, of course, you can have your standard reverb sounds with uh, Perfect Plate XL, but you can also get extremely crazy. Some of these sounds we've already gotten a little bit crazy, but this one here takes it to uh, the next level. So we're going to start with this loop here. We're going to completely change this just using Perfect Plate XL. Nothing else. Are you ready? So we've created a completely different loop out of this drum loop. It almost, you know, it has sort of a nine inch nails or maybe even a Marilyn Manson vibe to that. And of course you could, it's mixed in at a hundred percent right now. You could start off, you know, mixed wherever, say a hundred percent, then automate that down and get it into your song or, you know, whatever. It almost has a melody to it, whereas before, of course, it's just a drum track. But with our resonance here, choose your notes, pull in your resonance. And uh, like I said, it almost has like a melody to it. So this is Perfect Plate XL, more than just a standard reverb. You can also do some crazy cool stuff with it. But of course it does uh, the plate reverb, the standard sort of plate reverb sound very well. It gives you plenty of uh, you know different options to really head in there and dial in just, uh, just the sound that you want. I thought that you were worth saving. I had my head above the clouds when we met I knew one day you would hate me Now my heart is cold and filled with regret You thought that you would use me But love is so confusing When I fell you didn't even try to pick me up You thought I wouldn't leave How could you be so naive? You chased your heart, ignored the signs painted above I just wanna be left alone Just wanna be left alone I feel it in my bones Feel it in my bones My heart is a cyclone Alright, so that's Perfect Plate XL, you can pick it up right over here at denise.io. And if you pick it up, highly suggest you check out their full walkthrough video. They go more in depth into every single thing you could possibly want to know about Perfect Plate XL. Of course, this will be linked below. Uh, you can also pick it up at Plugin Boutique if you prefer to get it there. All right, so this is Perfect Plate XL. If you're looking for a plate reverb with a lot of different controls, this one is definitely worth checking out. Again. Denise Perfect Plate XL.